So what are the benefits of, of capsaicinoids? I think pain relief is one that people are yeah. common. Most individuals, I think, if they heard the term capsaicin, mm -hmm. they would think of a topical rub-on cream right. that they may actually be able to apply to certain areas for uh, the relief of typically arthritis pain, sometimes inflammation, sometimes mm -hmm. itching, et cetera. So it's been used in, in many cases for you know, pain relief, and it does that specifically by you know, blocking the signal uh, from the spinal cord to the brain um, through really inactivation of, of something known as substance P. Uh, so there, there's a wealth of literature on that. There's a lot of anecdotal reports of individuals using this topical uh, capsaicin cream at various concentrations for pain relief. Um, now in terms of the, the literature that we've really focused on in, in some of our research, capsaicinoids or capsaicin, uh, regardless of what term you want to use, that has been used for uh, purposes of weight management and associated parameters. So studies uh, have involved acute trials in which an individual may ingest um, capsaicin or capsaicinoids uh, one time and one time only and then before and at intervals after that ingestion they may measure various things such as energy expenditure um, which would indicate a thermogenic or a heat producing mm -hmm. effect they may measure things such as fat oxidation or the appearance of uh, what are called free fatty acids into the bloodstream. We've done some of that work. Other studies have actually involved chronic ingestion of capsaicinoids either through whole foods, uh, some studies have included whole foods, um, you know, soups, etc., or encapsulated products over the course of several weeks. And typically the outcomes of interest there would be things such as uh, body weight, uh, body fat levels uh, assessed through various techniques, um, possibly focusing on things such as blood sugar regulation, uh, blood insulin concentrations, hemoglobin A1C, things that are associated with uh, oftentimes the, the regulation or control of blood glucose uh, related to type 2 diabetes. And they've done that because oftentimes when individuals lose a significant amount of, bo significant amount of body mass, they see that there's favorable changes in you know, blood sugar and insulin sensitivity and associated parameters. So some studies have involved acute single ingestion. Mm -hmm. Other studies have involved actual daily ingestion over the course of a six, eight, 12 week period.